In this video, you're going to learn what the pullback function of Psygo.jl is and how it uses reverse mode automatic differentiation to efficiently evaluate vector Jacobian products. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. Similar to the last video on Jacobian vector products with the forward diff.jl package, we are again looking at a vector valued function which takes a four dimensional input x and maps it to a three dimensional output u, so a mapping from four to three dimensions. I want to again showcase that by creating the exactly same evaluation point, which consisted of one, 0 0.5, 1 0.5, and 2.0, a four dimensional vector. And if we call the function on this evaluation point, it will return three dimensional vector. Now we want to use reverse mode automatic differentiation. And there are a lot of options in Julia. Here I want to work with Psygoat. And then let's clear the screen and look at all the functionality of Psygoat by saying Psygoat dot and use the tab auto completion. And we see there's a lot of functionality that is part of Psygoat. Most interestingly for us is the gradient function, the Hessian function, as well as the Jacobian function that we have here. These are like the really high level derivative information you can obtain in reverse mode using Psygoat. And then later on, we will also look at the pullback functionality, which is Psygoat's way of implementing vector Jacobian products. But let's start again by obtaining a full Jacobian using Psygoat. So let me clear the screen once again and then say full Jacobian is equal to Jacobian, which is imported into the global namespace here, applied to the function f and then evaluate it at the evaluation point. So this will run for a bit. I will make a cut here. And here we go. That took about 40 seconds on my machine. We get as a result a tuple consisting only of a matrix. And since that is now just in time compiled, if you were to re-execute it, it would run almost instantly. So why does it return a tuple here? Because that's for generality. In that case, that f could take more than one argument. So let's say it's not only taken an x, but also a y and a set. Then we had to provide all the input or all the evaluation points in X and Y and Z and Psygoat would return a Jacobian with respect to all the inputs in that tuple here. So we can either index the tuple at position one to get the matrix or we could also use some clever tuple unpacking by just placing a comma behind the full Jacobian. And then if we look at the full Jacobian we see it's just the matrix. And of course, this matrix is three by four dimensional since we are working in the numerator layout, meaning that we add the dimensionality of the input to the original function f in the column dimension. So we have a three from the output of f and a four from the input of f. For this video, similar to Jacobian vector products, However, we are not interested in the full Jacobian. Rather, we are interested in vector Jacobian products. So what is a vector Jacobian product? And essentially, this is taking the Jacobian, which we could also write as df by dx, evaluated at some point, and then left multiplying it with a vector a, or whatever kind of name you want to give that vector. And if a is a column vector, then we had to transpose it into a row vector, and then the result of this expression gives us another vector. And of course, since we are left multiplying something with a three by four dimensional matrix, this left multiplication point has to be three dimensional as well. So let's create an arbitrary left multiplication point, left multiplication point, and say it is three entries and let's have 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and 1.0. And then we can obtain the vector Jacobian product by saying left multiplication point transpose, which is done by the apostrophe in Julia, and then matrix multiply that with the full Jacobian. Here we go. And we're getting out a one by four dimensional row vector here because the result of it, it's, it's a row vector. Here we have four entries. And it's of course, because if we multiply a three dimensional vector with a three by four dimensional matrix from the left, the result will be a four dimensional vector. Okay, that's the naive way of implementing a vector Jacobian product. And now we want to use the intrinsic functionality of Psygoat called pullback to do that more efficiently. So now let's use the pullback functionality of Psygoat to efficiently obtain the VJP, the vector Jacobian product. Well, how does that work? So we use the functionality called pullback and apply it to the function f 
and hand over the evaluation point at which we want to have the Jacobian evaluated. And let's execute that and see what it does. So here it executes instantly. If we hadn't done the Jacobian function prior, this would have also compiled for about 40 seconds. So it's reusing a lot of the information it has from the compilation of the Jacobian call. What does it return? So it again returns a tuple. Now we also have a second point. This first entry of the tuple we've already seen before. That's if we were to query f at the evaluation point. So the pullback function returns two things. So first the f evaluated as well as something that is rather cryptic, but it's a function that we can call. So let's give those two returns a value. So first let us call f evaluated and then f pullback, then again call pullback on f at the evaluation point. So again, this f evaluated is f at the particular query point and then the f pullback is a function. And let's try to call that function on the left multiplication point. And then we see we get the same result as we had as if we were to take the left multiplication point, transpose it and multiply it with the full Jacobian. With the minor difference that here we are getting a row vector, so an adjoint vector, and here we're getting a column vector. But that's just a smaller technicality. However, again, Zygote is returning a tuple. Same idea because we could have had multiple inputs to f. And that's because the result of a pullback or a vector Jacobian product is of the shape of the inputs to the original function. Nevertheless, we see that the values are almost the same up to the four digits that are displayed here. So that's actually a good thing. So we see that those two produce the same result, but now we want to show that the approach of the pullback is way more efficient. In order for this, let me clear the screen and let's implement functions that obtain these vector Jacobian products for us. And let's start with the clever implementation again, which uses the pullback of Zygote. So let's create a function and let's call that the clever VJP. And this clever VJP shall take a function as well as a primal and a cotangent. Okay, what is primal and cotangent? These are terms from differentiable geometry. And in our case, they refer to the evaluation point as well as the left multiplication point. And in that sense, a vector Jacobian product is a function which propagates cotangent information over a function. So what does it do? So we will again use the pullback functionality of Zygote, but applied to function, which is evaluated at primal. Then this one returned the function evaluated as well as the pullback function. And since we are technically not interested in the evaluation of the function, I will just use a placeholder variable here and then call this the func pullback. And uh, that's the pullback function. And maybe a quick side note on why we are getting this f evaluated out. And this is because maybe you've worked with neural networks before and training neural networks with gradient based information usually involves two passes through the neural network, a forward parse and a backward parse. So you're first evaluating the neural network on your particular input and save some intermediary values. Then in a reverse parse, you use these intermediary values in order to obtain the derivative information. And these are also the two returns we get. So essentially pullback is just doing the forward pass through the vector valued function for us at the particular input. And then we also get the output for free, although we might not need it, but we're still getting it here. So it's returning it because we might then shorten some other computations. And then we are getting a function which performs the reverse pass for us, simply put. Well, then let's use this pullback function in order to obtain the VJP result by saying func pullback applied to the cotangent. And here again, be careful since this returns a tuple, I will just use the comma to unpack the tuple. Okay, then let's return the VJP result and then and the function. Let's quickly check if the implementation is good. So let's call clever VJP on the function f with the evaluation point as well as the left multiplication point. And here we're getting the exactly same numerical values. Let's now also implement the naive VJP, which we had all the way in the beginning of the video. So we also have the same signature. So it takes a function, a primal and a cotangent information, and then it obtains first the full Jacobian using reverse mode automatic differentiation by calling Jacobian on the function evaluated at the primal. And then we will get our VJP result by saying 
cotangent from the input apostrophe for the transpose matrix multiplied with the Jacobian and then let's return this result and then enter function let's also call this function on f with the evaluation point and the left multiplication point and of course yes i made an error since jacobian of course returns not just the jacobian but the tuple so we also need the tuple unpacking here with the comma then let's try it again and here we go so we are again getting same digits but just in a adjoint vector of course you could also use an apostrophe here to transpose it again to get a column vector well then let's use the benchmark tools suite in order to benchmark our functions let's clear the screen and call at benchmark of the clever vjp first on the function f the evaluation point and the left multiplication point let's run this benchmarking and then we get some statistics uh, by executing the function a couple of times here we go so on average it takes about 14.5 microseconds to evaluate our vector jacobian product let's do the same with the naive one so let me just change the names here to naive vjp and let's run that so again we'll take a couple of rounds here did 10,000 samples probably here we'll do the same and there we get an average time of 73 microseconds so something in between five to six times slower than the clever vjp since that might already be an interesting factor this difference will become way more pronounced if the function f gets larger so having higher dimensional inputs let's say 100,000 dimensional to 500,000 dimensional something in that range and for many applications in scientific computing and machine learning the jacobians to vector valued functions are sparse and that means in these large large matrices only a handful of entries are non-zero and and if we were to compute a full Jacobian as we do it in the naive VJP that we see here we would compute all those zeros and also we had to store them somewhere which is just ridiculous right storing and computing zeros which later on then just provide no additional information at a certain point this might even become infeasible and then you have to rely on VJPs or how Zygote calls them the pullback functionality where do we have it here and by the way pullback is also a term from differentiable geometry for this vector jacobian product so in summary the vector jacobian products in zygote are implemented using the pullback functionality and that's particularly helpful if you have sparse and large jacobian matrices that often appear in computational science a big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There's more content on automatic differentiation in Julia. Here you will now see a similar video as well as the playlist. I hope to see you in one of the next videos.